Good morning, I hope you're all well. I am going to talk about my top 10 regrets from my last trip to Disney World in Florida. I thought that this video would be helpful so that if you were thinking about certain things and you weren't sure what the repercussions were going to be, then hopefully what my minor negative experiences from my last trip will help you. At number 10 is no balloon. Ever since I was really, really tiny going to Disney World, there were these great people hanging around the streets of all the parks when you first go in, and they had massive bunches of balloons. And because they're quite expensive, my parents never bought me one, and then when I was old enough to get one, I'd always think about it on the way into the park and forget on my way out to get the balloon because obviously you don't want to be going on all the rides with your balloons. So I never got my balloon and I thought my last trip would be the one, but it wasn't, so boo, no balloon. At number nine, this only applies to people using the Disney dining plan, but I don't think I used mine to the fullest. I hardly used any of my quick service credits and all my snacks I sort of save for the end. And snacks isn't so bad because you can buy bags of sweets or biscuits and then take them home as gifts. But the quick service, I really just didn't use them. I think we had about six quick services left at the end of the holiday. We went shopping to Walmart and bought cereal and things because we didn't think we'd have enough credits when we were preparing for the holiday and in hindsight we probably shouldn't have done that we should have just done all the quick services and then if we'd run out just popped to the supermarket near the end of the holiday but I honestly don't think we would have had to have done that. Number eight is make sure you choose the right hotel. You, It doesn't make a massive difference really but from my experience at Port Orleans Riverside, there wasn't a lot of places to put your clothes. They had three drawers and no wardrobe. It was just like an open hanger and we took a lot of clothes and so there wasn't really anywhere to put our stuff. It was sort of like a motel so you were never inside and God knows why but it was so important for me to be inside a building in the hotel and have a corridor and I really miss that and the location is really important and Port Orleans Riverside was actually in quite a good location for us at the time but I think I would have rather have stayed in a Magic Kingdom resort because that was our favourite park out of all the parks that you can go to and it was a bit of a faff to have to drive to the Magic Kingdom and park and things and just from my experience of staying in the Polynesian, it was a lot easier to get to the Magic Kingdom because obviously you have the monorail and the boat. And just it just had a completely different atmosphere. Also, I didn't feel like Port Orleans had the best restaurant or quick service. And obviously you're going to be eating probably the most at your hotel, certainly your quick service. And that wasn't the best. So yeah, choosing the right hotel. It was still a lovely hotel though. Number seven was getting a Mustang convertible. We don't really see Mustangs in the UK. I probably see two every three months in the UK. And they're really awesome cars and we're really happy we got a Mustang. Actually we didn't get a Mustang, that's such a lie. We wanted to get a Mustang but we got a Chevrolet Camaro. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is sort of the same, and we don't ever get those here either, so that was still just as fun. But we ended up getting a convertible because all of our holidays that we take in Greece and various places in Europe, we always get a convertible because it's nice and hot, and when you're travelling, if you want to go to a beach that's an hour away, you don't have to worry about missing all the sun. And you see some amazing sights along the mountains and things. Disney World, a bit of a different story. If you're out in the parks all day, and then you get back to your car, all you want is the coolness of the air conditioning. You don't want to be putting your roof down and then you're still stuck in the sticky hot heat. It's a different kind of heat in Florida. It is quite humidy, I would say, so it's not like a clean heat. And what was my other point? Oh yeah, driving around Disney World is not really pretty because you're mostly on 
busy roads and you're not going to really see anything with the roof off so getting a convertible is pointless. Number six was picking up our car. We didn't want to pick the car up at the airport or drop it off at the airport because we didn't really know what we were doing and we knew we were going to have loads of bags and we just thought it would be easier to get the Magical Express which is totally true and the Magical Express, Magical Express was so easy and I would recommend using that but the only problem was that we booked our car to pick up on our the next day, first thing in the morning and then take it back the night before we left and just picking it up late and dropping it off early it sort of wastes your first morning because you're desperate to go to a park and you have to faff around getting the car and they don't do it very quickly when you arrive they don't give you your car instantaneously so you're just thinking please I want to go to the Magic Kingdom and then dropping it off early I feel like you're depressed that it's your last night anyway and then you're having to go do some sort of admin bits and I think it's just best to maybe just rent a car in the middle of the holiday or pick it up and drop it off from the airport. I don't think it's too hard to drive to and from the airport, it's not that far if you go to Orlando International anyway. Number five I've sort of already touched on but it's packing too many clothes. I was worried that I would get all gross and horrible from walking around the parks all day and that I'd want to change in the evening and I don't actually remember if that really happened but I just remember packing basically the equivalent of two outfits a day and I definitely didn't use all my different outfits and we took so many clothes for every eventuality which is good to be prepared but at the same time we just had nowhere to put it there was only two of us and we were in obviously a standard Disney World room and I think that some hotels have a lot of space to put your clothes but as I said before Port Orleans Riverside just didn't. We had to keep a lot of our clothes in our suitcases and they're all out on display and I hate a hotel room looking messy because you're there for sort of cleanness and luxury and loveliness. So I would just be wary of packing too many clothes. I definitely took too many shoes and I didn't I definitely didn't wear more than half of the shoes I took. So it's good to be prepared, but I think certainly girls can over prepare. Number four was booking table service restaurants for lunch times in parks. You, when you book a reservation in Disney World, you have to keep to it unless you cancel it over 24 hours before you go. If you don't cancel it, then you get charged. And I don't know how much it is, but it's not worth being charged for something you aren't doing. And I booked a few table services and parks that I knew we were going to because we'd booked fast passes for the morning or the afternoon and it's just not great I think and here's the reason why when you're rushing around the parks and then all of a sudden you have to stop and relax I find it really hard to go from 100 miles an hour to zero and you're desperate to get out in the parks and play and then you have to sit and wait and especially if you're on the Disney dining plan you need to make the most of it so you have to have a main and dessert and so you're there for not too long they do roll you around a bit and get you going but I would just much rather when I'm at the parks during the middle of the day and you're missing you know the peak of the day the heat of the day which in some instances people may like just to get a bit of a break but you only need to recharge your batteries in a park and then get back on your way and lunchtime is going to be I don't think you're ever going to really finish what you want to do in a park for lunchtime. Plus, I personally never feel that hungry in the middle of the day. I'm either starving in the morning and at night time, but the middle of the day, because I'm distracted and busy, I don't feel as hungry, so I didn't... And I would never have dessert at lunchtime ever. And so I feel a bit full and flat and... I just don't think it... I think it's definitely worth eating at the parks, and I would recommend having supper or breakfast but lunchtime it just sort of pins your day and I think it's better just to leave it a bit and you can always go to the park in the morning and go back in the evening just to eat but I think quick services you can get your batteries recharged you can cool down and I think that's a much better use of everyone's time.
Number three is I always go on about how you need to plan at Disney World and you'll waste your holiday if you haven't planned your dining reservations and your fast passes and I planned our holiday down to the minute and I don't regret that and in fact I recommend people do that but because I was so excited about doing everything in the first week that we were there we were busy all the time we were on the go all the time and slightly because of jet lag we were getting up really early in the morning at about five o'clock in the morning because that would have been about 10 o'clock in the morning in the UK so we just weren't quite adjusted and not that, that was a problem because it was easy to get up and go but then we did get really tired and we weren't going to bed at normal hours if for getting up at five o'clock in the morning we were still going to bed at say 11 which may not seem too late but when you've been up for that long it, it's hard and after about seven days I was we were rushing around really excited loved everything we were doing and we were eating all this food that I wasn't used to eating either and we wanted to do a late night extra magic hours at the Magic Kingdom and it got to about midnight and I literally was walking around the park doubled bent over and I didn't want to go back to the hotel room I didn't want to waste midnight hour and I couldn't stand up straight in the queues and Alex just said this is ridiculous we need to go back and the next morning we had to wake up early because we had a table service at Chef Mickey which was a massive buffet and I just thought I just, there's just no way that I can eat this and I feel pretty dreadful and so they let us cancel it with no fee because I was sick but then we were on the go anyway and we went to a park and then we had to come back and get changed to get ready to go to downtown Disney and then go to Cirque du Soleil and we had about 40 minutes to get ready and we both got on the bed and just fell asleep and then luckily I'd, I'd set my alarm for when we had to leave and the alarm went off and we just thought oh my god we're not even nicely dressed for this place and we just had to leave and go otherwise we would have been late and then it turned out that we were not late that we missed the show but we definitely had to run across downtown Disney from when the, where the boat dropped us off on the completely other side of downtown Disney and we just felt really really rubbish and the next day I had to sort of move our fast passes around so we could have a bit of a lie-in and relax by the pool and not actually do anything until after lunch so I know everyone says you need to hit it hard or go home at Disney but I think it is really important just to have a morning off maybe after five days otherwise you'll just feel a bit crappy so that would be that that's that At number two is going at the very very busiest time of year you can look at timetables of when Disney is at its busiest and it's at its busiest in March during the Easter weekend and I thought we were going at the quietest time of year and we ended up going at completely the opposite the totally busiest time of year I don't know why I didn't research this more I think I just assumed that March would be quiet because the weather's not perfect and I knew that the summer holidays were busy and the first 80% of our holiday was busy which was fine there was no problem with that and that didn't bother us at all but then our last weekend hit I think we were leaving on the Tuesday and it got to Saturday when I think it was the Easter break in the UK and it was spring break and the US and you could really notice the difference from the Friday to the Saturday we couldn't find parking in any of the hotel resorts when we're having a meal there we really struggle to find parking in the parks not struggle to find parking but you're miles away from the park and you always have to get the little shuttle bus to the park the queues are just monumental and we had our fast passes and because it was near to the end of our holiday it didn't matter as much because we had done everything leading up to that point but the pools were really busy the quick services were really busy it was just everything was just so intense and heaving and Disney is busy and it can cope with that really well but this busy weekend was just the pits and I would say if it was the beginning of your holiday it's definitely something to avoid and I think that it's just the odd weekend that it would be hugely busy and I think if you visited Disney loads and loads and loads and you don't want to do everything then it's fine to go but if it's your first time or if you want to get 
the max out of everything, then don't go. Ha do a little bit of research before you go. Make sure you're not going during the busiest times. At number one is not going to the World Showcase, the World Showcase in Epcot Center. I never went to the World Showcase when I was younger. I didn't even know it existed until a couple of years ago, which is totally my fault and something my family just weren't interested in doing. And then I had a look at it all before Alex and I went away and there are a couple of rides there that I wanted to go on that we didn't go on. I think it's something for adults and for kids because I think there's a... Duffy treasure hunt in the World Showcase and you can get a passport stamped in each country you go to but just from an adult point of view there are lots of different types of alcoholic drinks there that look quite fun like different margaritas in Mexico and tequila and lots of different shopping from a shopping point of view there's loads of different things you can get from lots of different countries that you can't find in the rest of Disney. Those are my top 10 regrets, nothing major. The number one was just something that I do really regret looking back, but the rest of them didn't really affect my holiday at all, I have to be honest, but they are things that I would change. And I hope you find that helpful. Any questions, let me know. And thank you as always for watching, and I hope you have a really nice day. Thanks, bye bye bye.